Hello, beer tubers, and welcome to another beer review with me, Peter, the master of hoppins. Today, checking out some more German beer that I picked up on Beer Dome. Uh, this is more beer from Augustina in Munich, and this is two of their beers. This is their Edelstoff Export Beer, a Dortmunder Export, and their Dunkel, so a Munich Dunkel Lager, Munich Dark Lager. Um, yeah, two classic beers from a, a very renowned classic brewery. And I've had neither. I've actually only had one beer from them, which was recently, which was their Helles, Lagerbier Hell, which was very nice. Pretty much a prototypical Helles. Uh, so let's see here. They're both 5.6%. The Edelstoff, the Edelstoff, they say, is a bright export beer, sparkling and fresh at the same time, brewed with the noblest raw materials. The high-class product of the old Bavarian brewing art, a great treat for every beer expert. And about the... Uh, Dunkel, that's a Munich's ancient beer with a typical malty aromatical spicy taste, a real treat for, lo treat for lovers of dark beers. So that's it. And they, they are actually quite sparing with their descriptions on their website, but that's all there is. And on the labels, there's next to nothing, just ingredients and uh, ABV and, and whatnot. But let's start off with the Dortmunder export. So in Denmark, we call this style Gullöl. Golden beer, gold beer. <laughs> it's uh, just the nickname of it. And it's usually, there's a lot of variants of this. There is a lot of imitations of it as well by big breweries. But it's got a little bit of a bad rep. There's the classic Gulul, which is around 5.6-ish to the ter territory like that. And then we've got the really strong Gulul, the extra strong Dortmund export beers, I guess, which is like Carlsberg Elephant and uh, some of these like oh, like really strong Beers, they call them export beers as well. There's a few different ones. Can remember all of them. There's like almost all larger scale breweries do something like that. Like they have a five, six, five, eight percent export beer, and then they have an even stronger one. Um, and sometimes the stronger ones are also it doesn't have the word export on it. But I, as far as I remember, there a few of them does. Maybe I should revisit like some of those Carlsberg Elephant and all that. Uh, but yeah, 5.6%, uh, you know, Dortmund export pretty much similar to Helles, but stronger. So yeah, bright golden yellow color in the glass. You can see me through it. Uh, looks great. Looks like their Helles Lager. It's got a white head. Let's check out the aroma. Very typical uh, Dortmund export. I feel like it's a little bit more hoppy maybe than their Helles. I'm getting more of like a citric, get grassy, floral thing. But very, very nicely balanced. Soft maltiness, uh, crisp maltiness, breadiness. It really smells like a more pure, proper version of some of those like <laughs> oil export and all these like just like done like with true German tradition and heritage. Like I don't think Dortmund export beers are ever gonna be my favorite type of lagers, but I think they can be nice when they're done right like this. Smells good. Let's try it. Cheers. Thanks to Beardome for the beers. Mmm. Really soft. Very full. It really reminds me of these kind of beers. <laughs> Just in like a more pure sense. It's almost similar as well to uh, some of the Fest beers. There's, it's like it's not far off. Uh, some of the classic fest beers that are strong for Oktoberfest that are pale. Strong, robust malt flavor, sweet malt, bready malt, uh, doughy, maybe even lightly crackery, but it feels more doughy and like almost like an undercooked bread, a loaf of bread, wheat bread or something, because it has like that doughy sensation because the carbonation is really soft. As per style, like a lot of these classic German beers, they aren't highly carbed. Then there is a touch of peppery spice on the back, floral nuances, grassy. It's good for what it is. It's never going to be a beer that blows your mind, but it's to a T. It's a really refreshing lager, uh, really easy going. If you love the kind of fest beers, but you can't get them year round and you want to drink something fest beer like, get something like this instead because you can get this year round. I think it's uh, it's very similar. Let's move on to the Dunkel. So Dunkel Lagers, Munich Dunkel Lagers. They used to haunt me a bit in the past. I never was a big fan. It was one of my least favorite styles. And I think it's because I had so many really sweet ones. 
Like there are so many macro examples of this that are like really sweet. And the same with the Czech dark lagers. I much prefer them to be dry. Uh, and I, in general, I had a thing for not liking dark, lower strength beers that much compared to imperial strength. But I'm seeing myself enjoying them more and more. Once in a while, I really like, oh man, that was a great brown ale, or wow, that was a great Dunkel Lager, or Vienna Lager, whatever. Those kind of beers usually wasn't the big thing for me, but things are changing. So hopefully this will be good. If just judging by the Hedis and the um, Export beer, this will also probably be prototypical. Let's see. But yeah, golden, or golden, uh, copper hued in the glass, brownish. Uh, it, it looks quite bright copper actually with the lights. Uh, slightly off-white head on it. Yeah, it looks pretty much like a proper Munich Dunkel. I think they also vary a little bit. Like it depends on brewery to brewery. Some have the really dark ones. Some have uh, more lighter ones. They have to be at least this shade. Um, and also I think maybe one of the reasons why I've never been a big fan is because there's so many OG Danish breweries uh, around the country that's, that's something something brew house that's made a Dunkel Lager that's just been shit. <laughs> or infected from like really small breweries that's been quite a thing uh, but yeah let's see how this one is check out the aroma yeah uh, smells very prototypical as well um quite more toasty nutty pretty much the lager equivalent to a brown ale caramel toffee smells very autumnal but yeah uh, slightly almost like a little bit of a brown sugar note as well it smells dead on let's try it cheers Mm. Ooh, quite toasty, not sweet, which is nice. Yeah, it's, it really truly is like the brown ale equiv equivalent of lager beer, really. It's nutty, it's toasty, but then it's more crisp and more clean. No esters, as you'll find in, in, a, in a brown ale. Hazelnut loaves, kind of um, lightly toasted pumpernickel bread or... Maybe not as heavy as pumpernickel, but there's something about our toasted rye bread, Danish rye bread. Some of the lighter rye breads. There's a little bit of that toffee, dry, slightly peppery hop finish, but not like crazy. Also pretty much prototypical. Also the one thing on the aroma, it reminds me, just for a whiff there, a little bit of Danish Vitul, which is like a Danish low ABV beer style that's originating from Denmark, which is also like a darker beer. Uh, because it has a little bit of that, that toasty, sweet, bready uh, aromas. Almost like a little bit worty, but it's not like, it doesn't taste like wort. Toasty, almost slightly burnt, like toast. Really good. Prototypical, both. I mean, there's nothing you can put on these. Like, these are really tasty. If you want to know how you should brew these styles, drink these. I mean, that's it. It's more fun when brewers deviate a bit, like maybe something like this that's a bit more intense on the malt character or something like this when, where it's a bit more hop forward or just have a little bit more layered complexity. But I can't fault these. Like they are so true to style and really well brewed. I think Augustina is really nice, but I've not been mind blown or like, whoa, this is amazing by any of the beers. They feel really clean and really well done, but it's not like anything that's blown my socks off so far. Uh, but maybe having on a draft someday from a wooden keg will change that. They're easy 90s. They are 90 for both. Like, there's nothing I can fault on them, but I'm not, like, overly excited thinking they're the best of their kind, but they're just so well made. Like, um, if it wasn't because uh, I was doing a video, I would be kicking them back way too fast because they're just so well made and easy drinking. So, yeah, great stuff. Really nice beers. But thanks a ton to Beer Dome for the beers. If you can't get them in your area, if their brewery web shops do not ship to you, you can get them on Beardom. They ship on, yeah, all over Europe, all over the place. Great shop. Uh, not sure if these two are still available because apparently these German lagers are going quick when Beardom get them these days. I love that. That's awesome. So keep an eye out on Beardom. Maybe they'll get even more obscure stuff for something from smaller breweries that doesn't have the same kind of distribution. But really good stuff. Uh, kind of prototypical beers for their styles. So if you had either the Dunkel or the uh, uh, 
Edelstoff export video. Let me know what you thought of them. As always, remember to comment, subscribe, check out the Facebook fan page and Twitter and Instagram. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Ring the bell for future notifications about videos. And I'm mostly cheers and some Munich Dunkel. And see you guys in another video.